Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here bringing you another video. So this one is an updated video, sort of. So I don't know if you have used Fire TVs or Android TVs in the past, but uh, up until recently, uh, Home Assistant had a separate component for Fire TV and a separate component for Android TV. And uh, they've since kind of combined those under the same component umbrella so that's kind of all one uh, component uh, that will work with either one so this is a, a a video on how to set up this component and to get it working this is how to set up the uh, the android tv component uh, for uh, home assistant and, and have it working with your fire tv it took me a while to get this working properly so uh, bear with me throughout this tutorial i know some others are having issues with this as well so hopefully this will help get you guys going in the right direction. I don't know if you remember uh, the, the original Fire TV component, but in order for it to work properly, you had to use something called a Fire TV server. Uh, and it would basically kind of be a middleman for uh, all of your Fire TV devices to communicate properly with Home Assistant. This is essentially kind of the same setup. We're going to install basically an ADB, so Android Debug Bridge uh, server and have it running in Docker. And it will become our kind of middleman between the Fire TVs and Home Assistant. So basically uh, the same type deal. A little bit more configuration for this one, but not too much more. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So of course, for starters, uh, if you don't already have it uh, enabled, you need to turn on ADB debugging on your uh, Fire TV. Once that's done, then we are ready to install our ADB server in Docker. Uh, once we have it installed, then uh, we will create our uh, startup script uh, for configuration of our ADB server. After that's done, then we are ready to add our Android TV component into Home Assistant. And lastly, uh, we'll just kind of see what that looks like in action. So let's get started. We need to make sure that our system has adb debugging turned on uh, so in order to do that we're going to go over to settings and then from there uh, we scroll over to my fire tv click on that then you're looking for developer options and there you should have ADB debugging. Just make sure that is turned on. Mine is already on, so I should be good to go. Once you have that turned on, then uh, we're ready to move on to the next step. Now that we have uh, debugging turned on on our Fire TV, we are ready to install the ADB server in a Docker container. And of course, I use uh, Docker Compose, so we're going to run through it uh, in Docker Compose here. So for starters, we're going to edit my Docker Compose YAML file. Find me an open spot down here towards the bottom. All right, so uh, for the name, I'm just going to call it ADB. And then, of course, for container name, we're going to call it ADB as well. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to set the uh, restart to always. Now, for the image, uh, this will be uh, Sorku slash ADB. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, but it's S-O-R-C-C-U slash ADB. Now, we want to have a, a command that's run every time this Docker container starts up. Uh, so we'll do a command here, and it's basically going to be uh, sh c, and then uh, quotation slash config slash startup dot sh ampersand adb dash a, 
dash capital P, which is for port. So the port is 5037, server, and then no daemon. Close quotation marks. And I'll have all that in the description down below so you can kind of copy and paste it. All right, so for volumes, not sure if we need all these. I know we need the first one because this is where I'm going to store my ADB config file. But it's a, you know, slash home slash Adrian slash ADB underscore config colon slash config. Now these other two I'm not sure about, um, but we'll put them in there anyway. Slash Etsy slash time zone colon slash Etsy slash time zone colon RO for read only. And then slash Etsy slash local time colon slash Etsy slash local time colon RO. And then for the port, it's going to be just 5037. That's the default port for ADB. So it's a 5037 colon 5037. And once you have all that in there, we can go ahead and save it. Now we just need to do a, a sudo docker dash compose up dash D so that it will create the new Docker container. And then we're just gonna jump over to Portainer and see how that looks, make sure everything looks okay. I'll do a refresh on this. Uh, there's the ADB container. Gonna look through here, everything looks good. It's got the uh, startup command in there. It's got my uh, volume that I need for my config file. So I think we are good to go. All right, so uh, now we need to uh, create up a startup.sh file. Uh, this is what we call in that initial uh, command whenever we start the container up. But this will have uh, the information it needs to know where to look for the Fire TV and all that kind of stuff. So this is basically a shell script. Put your bin sh at the top up here, and then we're gonna do a sleep for five seconds. Now devices, this is our device list. This is the IP addresses of the Fire TVs that we're gonna be adding. I only have one that I'm gonna add, uh, but if you had multiple ones, I think you could just comma separate them and everything should be good. So mine's 10.10.10.17. .10 .10 uh, let's see, echo, we're just gonna say connecting to devices. And then I'm gonna get my for loop here. It says for device in devices, do an ADB connect. And uh, close out the for loop and then we'll do echo done. And then of course for the uh, while loop, uh, basically the same thing for device in devices, uh, do an ADB connect. and then uh you know slash dev slash null this time it's going to sleep for 60 seconds and i'll have all this in the description below so you can kind of copy and paste it and, and tweak as you need once you have all that in there we'll go ahead and save it and i want to make sure that script is uh executable so we'll do a chmod a plus x startup.sh. And then we're just going to jump over to Portainer again. I'm going to restart this uh, container so that it picks up the newly created configuration file. So we'll restart ADB. Give that a second to come back up. And then I'm going to look at the logs. And as you can see there, it is already uh, connected to my uh, Fire TV at 10.10.10.17. And so everything looks good. Basically at this point, we are done and ready to move on to the next step. All 
All right, so everything has run smoothly pretty much so far. So we are ready to add our uh, Android TV component into Home Assistant. So in my uh, configuration.yaml file here, I'm just going to find an open spot down here under uh, under Media Player. So uh, the platform, of course, for this one is Android TV. Uh, the name, I'm going to call mine Kitchen Fire TV because that's where I have this uh, located at in my house. Uh, the host. This is the host of the actual Fire TV, so it's 10.10.10.17. .10 .10 now, uh, for ADB server IP, this will be the IP of where you're running that Docker container. Uh, so mine's 10.10.10.28. .10 .10 and then for the port, again, the default port is 5037. I'm going to go ahead and add that in there as well. Once we have that in our config file, we can go ahead and save it. And then basically, I'm going to jump over here to Home Assistant and just do a quick restart here. And uh, we'll just give that a second to come back up. Go ahead and jump over to that last step. All right, so let's see what this looks like in action. So I have the, uh, the media player up here uh, in Home Assistant so you can see it. So basically uh, any apps that you might have installed like um, uh, Pandora or Netflix or Plex, should all be listed under sources in this media player. So just to kind of to give you an idea of how these work, we're gonna click on some of these here just to kind of show you. So uh, let's look at the list here. We're gonna select Pandora. And as you can see, it looks like it's already opening. There's the Pandora splash screen. So uh, everything looks good there. I don't have actually a Pandora account set up on here, so it's not actually being used, but that's okay. Uh, let's select Plex from the list. And immediately it switches over to the Plex app. And it is uh, communicating with my Plex server here at home, so everything looks good there. Lastly, if we just basically hit the power button on this media player, let's see what happens. And as you can see, it basically just turns off the Fire TV. The TV itself is still on. That's okay, because this is uh, an old TV. It's not smart or anything. But um, it did turn the Fire TV off. So that's pretty cool. But that's basically it. As you can see here, uh, everything is working as it should. We got Home Assistant set up with our Android TV component, which is uh, communicating with our ADB server and Docker and controlling our fire tv that's the end of the video guys pretty awesome setup um like i said not too far off from setting up their old fire tv component that they used to have uh this one's uh just to, instead of a fire tv server we're using uh adb uh server and docker this way so about the same works pretty good let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video so of course for starters we uh we made sure the ADB debugging was turned on on our Fire TV. Uh, once we did that, we installed our ADB server in Docker uh, using Docker Compose. Once it was installed and up and running, then we went ahead and configured it uh, with a startup the SH file that we put in our config directory. Uh, after that was done and we saw that it had communicated with our Fire TV as it's supposed to, then we went ahead and added the component into Home Assistant. And of course, lastly, I just kind of showed you what that looked like in action. So that's the end of the video, guys. Uh, like I said, this was uh, not too far off from the old Fire TV uh, configuration and setup for Home Assistant, but a little bit different since they've combined the Fire TV and Android TV under one component. Uh, hopefully this helps uh, anybody that was uh, kind of confused and having issues getting this set up because I know it took me a little while to get it working properly, so I have a feeling that uh, there are probably some others that had issues as well. Nonetheless, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, definitely hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I will see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.